Good morning, Bowmanville. Eric Poulin, your Temple and Family History Leader here. Today's video, we're going to talk about indexing. There's been a lot of people asking about indexing over the past couple of months with COVID going on. This is something you can do from home. You're going to be doing this on your web browser, not on your mobile phone. So grab your computer, um, or if you're watching this, um, just chill out and, uh, and learn a little bit more about indexing. What you want to do is go to familysearch.org. Make sure that you're logged into your account. And then at the very top of the menu, there's a menu item called indexing. Go ahead and click on that. We're going to go right to the overview. If you've never done indexing before, we're going to go through a, a bit of an overview project here. They kind of have a test project to help you get started. Make sure that you know how to do it all. So I'm going to just take you through some of that uh, to get you feeling familiar with it. And then you can start actually contributing to what indexing is. And by the way, we're going to learn what indexing is as we go through here. So this thing says, okay, to get started, we're going to follow these steps. Go to the web indexing page and start indexing, yada, yada, yada. And then you find a batch that you're interested in. We'll explain what all that means in just a few minutes here. So let's click on the button and get started. Um, indexing is basically, if we click on this uh, guided tour, Introduction to Indexing, this will take you through exactly what I was just describing how to index, it'll take you through the various steps and explain what it's all about. So let's quickly jump into that. Um, at its core, indexing is basically taking all of the databases that have been collected over the years from individual registration cards, like this one that we're looking at here, um, state um, you know, you know, assessments and census records and, and baptismal records that have just been collected over many, many years. Um, and then there's been a worldwide effort to try and get this data into a digital database so that we can work with it. If it's on a piece of paper, you know, somebody has to actually manually walk over to the file system, file, you know, rifle through the cards and look for that piece of data, which is very inefficient since we're now a worldwide church trying to operate uh, as quickly as possible. If this information is entered into a computer, then we can just do a search just like we do on Google, but we can do a search on family search and find this information uh, right online. And so the process of indexing is a human being like you and I looking at a physical printed record and transferring that record into a digital format by reading it. This takes various different skills. Obviously you need to be able to read printing. Sometimes they're written in handwriting, so you need to be able to read cursive if you're going to be doing a, a record that has cursive in it. Um, but basically, and obviously there's different languages as well. So if there's a French or, or a German record, you'll need to be able to read that information. But basically what we're doing is we're taking this information of this person, um, Holmes Quincy Miller in this case, and we're going to be entering that information into the various family search fields so that this information becomes searchable. And then we can use that information to kind of build a research library for people who are trying to do family research, family history research. So in this case, um, you just basically you're going to go through all of these steps. This is just a step by step instruction set about exactly what to do for indexing. So rather than taking you through the individual steps, I'll leave this to you as an exercise. Uh, this exercise uh, to index a single card uh, will take you maybe 10 minutes um, by the time you finish reading the instructions, um, getting familiar with the interface and entering the data. And then once you're familiar with it, you can, you can go through these things much, much more quickly. So again, rather than going through each of these, let's just kind of jump back to indexing. And on this overview page, once you go through that initial, once you go through this initial kind of test project, which is the introduction to indexing project, you're then going to want to do something called find batches. Now a batch is a group of these printed records that you'll choose that has not been indexed before. And you're going to be the first person on earth to index this record. And so you're going to pick this batch. It'll be maybe 20 or 50 different names and you can work on it a little bit at a time uh, your batch will remain open there's a time period that you need to complete it 
within before it will get released back to the wild so other people can uh, pick it up and use it. But if you complete this batch of, say, 20 or 50 or 100 names, maybe over the course of a week or two, then that will get submitted for somebody else to review. So this, it goes through several layers of human touch. So the first one is obviously somebody's photographed this. The second is you who is going to uh, index it. You're going to look at the physical paper, and then you're going to be entering the data into the various fields on the computer. When you submit that, it will be then submitted for review. So somebody else is going to, again, look at the original data, look at what you entered as the uh, data, and they're going to just make sure, oh, did you get the name right? Did you get the date right? Especially when it gets into cursive writing sometimes, that second eye is really helpful. Uh, and sometimes numbers are hard to see. I've been I've done a few where I've had to like zoom in and we're like puzzling over, is that a six or what number is that? Um, so we do our very best to index it. Somebody else will review it. And once it gets reviewed and confirmed that your data matches what the review person says, then it's done. And that batch will, or that card or batch will be marked as completed. And then it'll be available for the public to be able to search on. It's pretty awesome. So once you complete this introduction to indexing, you'll click on Find Batches, and the system will present you with a whole bunch of batches that are available. Uh, again, batches are just various different records. They could be censuses. In this case, we're looking at some World War records or county marriages. Uh, so you can scroll through here and see what's available. Maybe you have specialty uh, background uh, if you have maybe some information or, or some experience with South Africa, that might be helpful. Um, in most cases, people tend to pick batches that they're familiar with. So, you know, in Canada, we might pick just a, either a Canadian or a U.S. Uh, census record or, or some kind of a batch that is going to be English or in at least a kind of familiar to our culture so that you won't be struggling with uh, the various different records. And they are ranked as beginner, intermediate, or advanced in terms of difficulty. The advanced ones are a little more challenging to read. Sometimes those are going to be records that are in cursive handwriting. Um, so I, I would suggest when you're starting, for sure, start with a beginning level. They can quickly get pretty challenging. Um, so this will filter out um, ones that are only available. So when I select the beginning right now, the only beginning level one is for me, U.S. Indiana County marriages. So let's have a look. So it'll load this project data. And in this case, it's a book of marriage licenses. As a bishop, the, the bishop, when he does marriages, there's a, actually a marriage book. And we have one in Bowmanville Ward. And it's got records that we've kept so somebody has gone and found these records and has taken photocopies of them, and now it's our job to um, be indexing. So what you'll do is you're going to be like zooming in on this and entering this information. So you can see what I mean by the cursive, right? If you're if you're a, a public school student, um, you've never been taught cursive writing, and so this might be challenging. Present occupation, for example. What does this say? I mean, I, it says automobile business. I can read it, but for somebody who's unfamiliar with cursive writing could be a challenge. And what does this say? Full Christian name. Tom Larus. Yeah, pretty hard to read. No, that's a G. Chon Chon Gruz. See what I mean? You really need to kind of compare. Oh, here's the same information up here. Is that a G, I think? R E W S. John Gruz. So it's important that you kind of take some time to absorb the information. That's why going through that practice one will be important. And uh, you're basically going through this and saying, should this image be indexed? Is there valuable information here? So this is part of the family history records that we would be interested in. This is a marriage record. So yeah, this I would say, should this be image, should this be image be indexed? Yes, absolutely. Then we'll go to the next one. Should this one be indexed? This is another marriage one. Yeah, for sure. And should this one be indexed? This is another marriage license or marriage record. Just having a quick look after it here. We've got some names, dates. Yeah, for sure. 
And then you start going through the details. So in this case, I'd be entering, oh, what's the page number? There it is, 166. What's the record number? Uh, good question. How do I find that? So you're kind of looking around for this information. I don't know how to find the record number. So you, you basically be searching around. I don't want to waste time on the video here trying to look for a specific piece of data on this particular record. But that's what we're doing. We're looking around for these things, grooms given names. So, you know, you'd be looking at J. Virgil Grooms. Um, and that's the groom. And then eventually we'd get down to the bride's given names. Oh, it's May Reed. And we're entering this information in. Eventually at the bottom, you're going to get to the next page and uh, complete this. And so that's what indexing is all about. And again, once you submit this at the end, it will then be available for somebody else to review. Now, sometimes it can get difficult to read. Sometimes the photocopying isn't as awesome as we'd like it to be. So some of these controls up at the top can help a little bit uh, with things like adjusting the contrast or showing you some examples of what handwriting might look like. So if you're unfamiliar with handwriting, you can kind of have a look. Oh, that's what an F could look like. And in my case, I was looking at some G's, like this, this guy, Gruz, is that a G? So you're like trying to compare. Nope, you know what? That's a C. I made a, a mistake. That's Cruz, not Gruz. So this thing can be helpful uh, when you're trying to figure out what's the right way to index this. So they've got it all set up here. There also are ways that you can uh, adjust the image, I believe, to uh, maybe adjust the contrast. And, um, you know, it'd be nice if we could be like in those CSI movies and, and, and just say, uh, can you clean that up a little bit? You know, have the tech guy just make it instantly clear. Of course, that's not real. Uh, that's just made up in movies. But we'll do our best here to try and zoom in and make sense of what this information is. Indexing is very, very valuable. We have so much of this data that needs to get digitized so that people can have ready access to it. Um, and the prophet has specifically asked for additional help in indexing, uh, especially over COVID. It's something that we can do from home. Unfortunately, there is no mobile app for indexing. Um, they tried that a number of years ago, back in 2012 and 2014. It's just they haven't figured out a way to do it yet. Um, you need a, a larger screen to be able to zoom in and, and have enough space to enter this information. And so they've, at the moment, it's only available on a computer. But it's still very, very valuable work. And I highly encourage you to get involved. Give it a try. Go through that, uh, that sample introduction to indexing batch. And by the way, just at the end here, if we go to indexing, for me, it's competitive. We got to be, we got to be beating the other people in the stake as a ward. Come on. So if you come down here to progress, um, you'll you'll be able to join some groups. So in the Oshawa Stake, there's 139 people who are part of the Oshawa Stake group, and in Bowmanville Ward, we've had 24 people who are who have done indexing before. So if we just do a bit of quick math here, 24 divided by 139. We only represent 17% of the stake, but let's be realistic. We need to be at least 50% of the stake. We need to have total dominance in our indexing awesomeness. Um, so once we get into this, you'll be able to see, oh, who's actually doing the index? You'll recognize a lot of these names, right? Um, as we scroll down here, you know, Pam Barter. Uh, and again, we could scroll through this. I saw Balbantine on there. Uh, yeah, Sister Balbantine. Lots of our ward members are on here, of course. Neville Daly, uh, Sister DeRoy, Brother DeRoy. Um, this is a great thing to do on a Sunday afternoon or just in an evening. You know, if you're feeling a little bit bored, youth can get involved in this. You know, we they've encouraged people up to, you know, as, lo as low as age 10 to get involved in indexing. Obviously, you may struggle with the cursive writing a little bit, but... Sit down with an adult. This is a good way to learn what cursive writing is about because 
at some point it's going to you're going to need to know this information you need to know how to write cursive uh, less now than ever but you'll still need to know that eventually anyway i encourage you to uh, have a look at indexing get involved and let's get our ward numbers increased just because that's awesome for competitiveness but really at the end of the day we're contributing to the worldwide effort in family history thank you